What's going on YouTube? So in this video, I'm sitting down with a Grammy Award winning music producer that's gonna tell us what he did to get to where he got to and how you can get those same results. Stay tuned. What's going on YouTube? Jarrell King here, aka Relevant. I'm a multi-platinum music producer and a music business coach. And in this video, I'm going to sit down with a Grammy Award winning songwriter, music producer, audio engineer, artist, and instrument player and he's gonna walk us through what he went through to get to where he is today how he achieved his success and how you can get those similar results so make sure you stick around till the end of the video this is gonna be a three-part video uh, broken up into sections so you guys don't have to sit through the whole thing and before we get started if it's your first time here and you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so by hitting that subscribe button and make sure you smash that like button please hit the like button. It helps the videos out and helps me get more exposure to spread this message and help more musicians like yourself. All right, now, uh, one thing about this video is I recorded this video a few years ago back when I had first launched my blog, The Untold Music Guidelines, and which was me, my first attempt at starting to teach artists what it took to turn their, their passion for making music into a full functioning business that they can use to leverage into getting partnerships, investors, record deals, or just being a successful independent artist, generating income, allowing them to live the life that they want for themselves. But now that I'm rebranding, cutting my hair, focusing on building up my YouTube channel and making sure you guys get the results that you want as artists, uh, I wanted to go ahead and upload this video and I will be uploading a bunch more of old videos that I did in the past. So I look forward to those because I will not let them go to waste and there's so much valuable information in there that will help you guys reach your goals of being a successful musician. So look forward to those, all right? Now that we got that out of the way, let's dive straight into the interview with Grammy Award winning music producer, Prince Boars. Um, so a little back history. I know some people may not know who you are. You are Prince Boy <laughs> and uh, Boy. producer, songwriter, yeah. engineer, MD, you name it, trumpet player, keyboard player, anything with keys, anything that makes noise. <laughs> um, can you give people a little history of like like some song that you may have worked on, something that people may have heard at uh, some point in their life? Well, I mean, my, my favorite song that I did because it's such a positive thing was Where's the Love, mm -hmm. Like I Peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that will for, forever be my yeah. probably number one song. Yeah. It'd be nice to beat that, but it did so much for humanity in the time it came out. Hell yeah. And the re-release of it. Spanish. Now I'm about to do the mm -hmm. Spanish version of it. That'd be it's interesting. Like just flipping and flipping and flipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so, dope. I mean, that song in particular, you know, I've done a lot of Black Eyed Peas songs and Don't Fuck With My Heart, it's Meet Me Halfway, mm -hmm. stuff like that, that I'm very proud of. Uh, a lot of stuff with Selena Gomez and other artists, Nika Costa mm -hmm. and uh, Mark Ronson. Nice. All kinds of people, you know. Bruno used to sing my demos. I heard about that. <laughs> Bruno Sleep Mars. Told me about that. Um, you know who else used to sing my demos is um, uh, Frank Ocean. I have all these demos. <laughs> Are you serious? Singers like yeah. That's crazy. Jesse J. That's so, sick, man. Anyways, yeah. Um, damn. I see that stuff. I didn't even know. Um, I knew about Bruno, but damn, yeah, Frank. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. Uh, especially seeing where he went, like you know, yeah, yeah. with his album just coming out. Um, what about so you have Don't Funk With My Heart. Each, I know a lot of the P's, they went numbers and numbers of platinum. So I know you have, I don't know how many you would count, but platinum plaques in, in, in your studio at home. You also have a Grammy for, I don't know how many, but I know that there's a two. Grammy, two Grammys. Yeah. That's one of my goals, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you've, I've looked up to you for a long time and to even, I didn't know you had two. I knew you had one, but to, to know the number and to hear about Bruno Mars and hear about Frank Ocean, it's like, all right. I still got some work to do, so a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation. Um, so I, I'm gonna get into it. I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, the and first, the New Zealand Grammy, by the way. You did get the New Zealand Grammy. Speaking of, I love that one. I told you I met Jerome. 
Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> in an Uber. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah, I met him. I told him uh, that I knew you. And he was like, get out of here. I was like, yeah, that's my, that's my big brother. He's like, oh, get out of here. But yeah, <laughs> so we go small, oh, small country. Guys, of the concourse. Yeah, he was cool. He told me to tell you hi. So like, if I didn't tell you, I, th I might have texted you. But if I didn't, there it is. <laughs> but all right. Um, so uh, I just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, it won't take up that much time. It'll really just be about kind of giving like up and coming producers, songwriters and artists a little bit of like an insight on like what you've been through and like what they could look forward to as they like go down this long ass road of pursuing this kind of dream. So I wanted to start off with production because I know that's like an area where you started first. Mm -hmm. And uh, first I just want to know at what point did you like decide like, hey, I can make a living and like run a music business off of being a producer? Like at what point did you like realize that? Um, well, it actually stemmed from being a trumpet player, mm -hmm. being in band, getting a scholarship to go to San Diego State, mm -hmm. going to that program, which was a composition program, not a performance program. Okay. Um, but they gave me the, the best scholarship and whatnot, the campus, and I just wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. So I went there and there's more composition. And I remember specifically, I had this one conversation with one of my teachers and I said, okay, so I have the best gig in town. I'm playing at Croce's Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. I'm playing for four hours and I'm making 60 bucks. <laughs> and this is the best gig in town. <laughs> and, and he's like, well, you know, if you play a gig, you get paid that one time. If you write a song, you get paid for the rest of your life. I was like, hmm. So I could spend four hours writing a song that could possibly pay me for the rest of my life or play a gig for 60 bucks. <laughs> and that was like a turning point for me. Okay. I was like, you know what? I mean, you know, I'm pretty good on my instrument. <laughs> I don't think I need to get any better. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna start working on this other craft. <laughs> and then, you know, whilst doing that, I have my own band, which was nine people. Oh, God damn. And uh, I was the front man of that. Uh -huh. So I looked up and here I am like kind of writing the songs for the whole thing, mm -hmm. telling everyone what to play and what to do, putting it all together, having the concept, creating the artwork and the, you know, it's like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm actually producing mm -hmm. all of this shit and musical directing it, and I should call myself a producer. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a lot a of people, director. yeah. Yeah. And the manager at that point. <laughs> yeah, that was too much. <laughs> All right, damn. So that's where that's where it started, really. I didn't know none of that. I knew you went to San Diego State, but I didn't know the band part. Oh uh, yeah. All right. That, so when from going from uh, like production, you moved to LA at some point or another. Mm -hmm. When did you transition from being just a producer to like creating records to like sell and shop, like making demo songs for other artists? Um. I would say that started, I had Snoop one in one of my joints when I was like 19. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> and uh, you know, that was inspiring. I was like, oh, okay, but I messed up. And this is one thing for everybody, for you uh -huh. and everybody else watching. Um, I messed up because I had too much pride in that song. Mm -hmm. And I thought, mm, if he wants it, it must be a hit. Mm. So I'm gonna keep it for myself. <laughs> And then I lobbied with them. I was like, well, okay, I'll give you the song, but I got to kick a verse. Well, and then finally they just disappeared. They were just like, nah, we cool. Yeah. <laughs> we will need your little song. <laughs> and then now that song, I don't even know where it is. <laughs> never came out, never, never, no, no nothing. You know, um, what was the original question though? Uh, what, what made you go from just making beats to like actually oh. trying to sell songs and, and demos? So there was, there was that, that moment and then um, when I moved to LA, uh, from back to LA from San Diego, I went. I moved into a house with this band called Stepchild, mm -hmm. and they were signed to Warner Brothers. Okay, it's this like five guy singing group, kind of like Take Six or, okay. or like you know just harmonies. There's like a low guy, you know, and um, 
or Boys to Men, you know, that mm. pop. And so I started doing stuff for them. Okay. Because we were all staying in the same house. And then that's when I, I realized that that was actually a channel for me to make some money, make some make some moves. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I felt like I could I could grab what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. Or what they were looking for, maybe even better than they could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Did you, um, so you, from there you just continued and did you like put together demo songs for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, at that time I didn't have like the Pro Tools or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I did it all on my keyboard. Mm -hmm. It was like a Insonic TS-10. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I would record all the stuff in there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. Yeah.